Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood the concept of function overloading properly. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is Inline Functions. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic of this lecture is Introduction to Inline Functions. First, I will introduce you to the world of inline functions. Then we will move to the next topic where we will understand modern use of inline functions. So these are the topics of this lecture. Let's start with the first topic that is introduction to inline functions. So what are inline functions? Before understanding what are inline functions, let's first understand what happens behind the scenes when we call a function. Calling a function involves jumping from the calling point to the function definition, executing the function and jumping back to the calling point. These are all the tasks we need to do in order to execute the function. A function cannot be executed on its own. We need to call that function. Now, what happens behind the scenes is quite important for us to understand. In reality, we need to jump from the calling point to the function definition in order to execute that function. Then the function will be executed and then we also need to return back to the calling point. Now, here jumping takes some extra time, which is called the overhead. We know the main job is to execute the function, that is what we want to do. But the extra task that we need to do is to jump back and forth. And this jumping takes some extra time, which is called the overhead. The overhead is the technical term which we need to remember. Now we know that in order to call a function, we need to do a lot of extra task as well. And this extra task takes extra time, which is called the overhead. Now, overhead can be a problem in terms of performance. This is true especially for small functions because calling small functions many a times increases overhead and it reduces the performance as well. Now, why it is the case? Let's first understand the meaning of a small function. A small function is a function which has one or two statements. Now, calling such functions does not make much sense because these functions will take less amount of time to execute compared to the overhead that they cause. So, we need to do a lot of extra work in order to call these functions. But in reality, execution of these functions take less amount of time. So, overhead is greater than the execution time and therefore the performance will reduce because we are unnecessarily doing the extra work for calling these functions. That's not true for large functions. If we have large functions with hundreds or even thousand lines of code, then there is no problem because execution time of these type of functions is much greater than the overhead that they cause. Due to this reason, overhead is almost negligible and therefore can be ignored. But we cannot ignore overhead for small functions. Therefore, it does not make much sense to call small functions as their overhead is quite high and the performance will reduce. Now, what is the solution to this problem? how we can eliminate this problem of increase in overhead and reduction in performance. The solution is quite simple. We should not define these functions in first place as they have only one or two statements. Instead, we can replace the caller by the code of the function. This is what we can do and this is quite a simple solution to follow. Or what we can do is, we can define a function as inline and the compiler will do the replacement for us. We do not have to do the replacement from our side. This will be done automatically by the compiler. So, if a function is inline, 
replacement is done automatically by the compiler. That is the usefulness of inline functions. If we define an inline function, then the optimization will be done by the compiler. This means caller will be replaced by the code of the function and the function will be deleted. So that's the concept of inline function. I hope this is clear to you. Now, in order to define an inline function, we can use the keyword inline. Let's take one example to properly understand this. Here is the example program. I have defined the square function with parameter x of type integer. This function will return the result of x times x, which is an integer. Here is the main function and inside the main function, variable x of type integer with value 10 is defined. And here, with the help of stdc out, I am trying to display the result of square of x. We know x will be replaced by 10 and we will get 100 as the result. So the output is 100 for this program. Now here we have a small function. This function has just one statement. It does not make much sense to call this function. It is possible that in future, we may decide to call this function multiple times. This will increase the overhead and the performance will reduce. So calling this function does not make much sense. So what is the solution to this problem? We can define this function as inline and this can be done by specifying the inline keyword in front of the return type of the function like this. Now the function is inline. The replacement of the caller will be done automatically by the compiler. The compiler may choose to remove this function and replace the caller by the body of the function which is x times x. Now what is x times x? We know the value of x is 10 so compiler may choose to replace square of x by 10 times 10. This is done at the time of compilation not at runtime. And here compiler may choose to further optimize this and replace 10 times 10 by 100. So now we have 100. When we execute this program, we will get 100 as the result. We are getting the same output for this program as well. But this program is now optimized by the compiler. As we can observe, there is no function call apart from the main function, which is called by the operating system itself. And here we have 100 in place of square of x. There is no calculation involved here. 100 will be directly displayed on the screen. So the performance increases drastically because of this program compared to the previous program. So that is the concept of the inline function. I hope this is completely clear to you. Now here is one important point I want you to understand. The compiler can completely ignore inline optimization if it thinks inlining is not a good idea. So, compiler may completely choose to eliminate the inline optimization because compiler has the right to do so. If it thinks that inlining is not a good idea here, then compiler can ignore the inline optimization. So, even if we specify the inline keyword in front of the function, there is no guarantee that the compiler will do the optimization for us. So, inline function does not come with the guarantee for optimization, but there is the high chance of optimization. I hope this idea is clear to you. Apart from this, we must not use inline keyword for large functions because large functions are anyhow not optimized by the compiler. So, we should not specify inline keyword in front of large functions with many statements. So, with this, we have understood the concept of inline functions. Now, we are completely sure what inline functions are and what they are capable of doing. But optimization is not the modern use of inline functions. Most of the programmers nowadays 
do not use inline functions for the purpose of optimization. They use it for a specific purpose. And this is what we will understand in the next topic. For now, we have understood the introduction to inline functions. Now we know what inline functions are. Let's move to the next topic where we will understand the modern use of inline functions. So, what is the modern use of inline functions? Inline functions can be used to define the same function within a project multiple times. We know that within a project, we cannot define a normal function multiple times. This may cause linker error. If let's say we have the function definition within a single file, and if we define the same function within another file in the same project, then linker will throw the error. This is what we already know from the previous lectures. But with inline functions, this is not the case. If we define a function as inline, then we can define that function within multiple files. It is possible. And we will not get linker error from the linker. Let's understand this properly through an example. Let's say we have this project with these three files main.cpp, test.cpp, and mathutils.h. These are the three files we have. Now, here you can observe in mathutils.h, we have the definition of the square function. And here in these two programs, I have included the mathutils.h header file. This means I have included the definition of this function in these two programs. So clearly, we now have three definitions of this function. Here inside the main function, I am trying to display the result of square of 10. And here I am trying to display the result of square of 25. We have the function test. So clearly, when we execute the main.cpp file, we will get the linker error, multiple definition of square of int. This is because this function is now defined in three different files. This is not allowed in C++. This is a normal function. But if we define this function as inline, like this, then there will be no problem. If we execute this program, we will get 100 as the output because square of 10 is 100. I hope this idea is clear to you. We know this already that within a header file, we must always write the prototypes of the function. But we may choose to define small functions. It is better to define those functions as inline to avoid such problems. So that's the modern use of inline functions. For large functions, it is still not advisable to define them within header files and define them as inline. So with this, we have understood the modern use of inline functions as well. This means we are done with the second topic also. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.